Hello everybody and welcome back to the most must-see YouTube review videos that you could possibly imagine. Okay, so um, now that I completely oversold this video, let's let's get on with it. All right, so what we have here. This is going to be a short review on Pictures of the Gone World by Lawrence Ferlinghetti and Next to Nothing, Collected Poems, 1926-1977 by Paul Bowles. Look at that nice cover. I believe this is a... Um, oh, what's her name? Is it Barbara Martin? Might be. Might not be. Um, cover, but it's, again, her Black Sparrow covers are fantastic, so, <clears throat> um, I don't know where to start. Let's start with this. Uh, it's in my hand. Let's just fucking do it. Okay, so, next to nothing, I wanted to like this book so much, because it's a Black Sparrow book, it's beautiful, it's put together amazingly, I... It just, it screams like me, okay? But, uh, alas, there are some things. One of which being um, the about the author bit, um, I think is the one um, that was supposed to go in um, the book Midnight Mass. No. Collected stories. The reason I say that is because um, it talks about these stories and then says this present volume consists of stories written by Paul Bowles since 1976. Since 1976, that probably would be um, Midnight Mass. So this bit right here is supposed to be in Midnight Mass because there are no stories written in this. Um, this is a book of collected poems. It says so right there on the cover. So that's a bit of a slip up. It's kind of like that, <clears throat> for you music lovers out there, how the back of the album of the um, Damned's self-titled album, the picture on the back is actually a picture of Eddie and the Hot Rods. Um, the artwork got switched. Um, so that's funny. That, that's a weird thing. So now everyone's like, oh my gosh, I need to go check the back of my damned album. Um, neat, neat, neat. Yeah. Okay. So back to this. Um, <clears throat> the poetry in here is a bit, um... liking um there is one poem in here that i really liked called elegy um let's see should i read some of it uh, maybe i will um everything is too late we are all unbecoming to each other come doors shriek doors we are all too late everything is unbecoming to everything else um it just, it, it's a good poem. I like it. Um, and yeah, it's longer than that, obviously. Um, but yeah, I kept reading this and just everything just, and I thought for sure, because at the end of each poem, it says like what year it was written. 1926, whatever. 1927. So I'm like, oh, okay, by the time we get into the 70s, he'll probably have... Um, Well, well, there goes um, my monetization. That's going to get flagged. Okay, um, no, but seriously. I thought that when he got into the 70s, he would have followed suit of a lot of the other um, poets who, um, by that time, were doing things a little bit different. And the one thing I will say is that his poems it got a lot shorter. Um which, again, a lot, um, th there was a lot of short poetry in the 70s, but, um, 
No, um, it just it didn't fucking hit for me. It really didn't. So um, I would, I guess, put this book um, next to nothing in the in the nothing pile. The the book the pile of nothing poetry. Um, I would put that next to that. <clears throat> now for Linguetti, okay, pictures of the gone world. Um, this. I liked a little bit better. Um, as you can see, I have three picked out poems that I liked um, instead of just one and the other. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out the best way to say this. Um, Ferlinghetti does this thing where his lines are all over the place. Um, and at first, it seems like there's a reason for it. Like, it's kind of like... Like, when you see the first couple poems, it feels like, oh, that's just how he breaks his lines. Second poem, that's just how he breaks his lines. But then we get a little further in. Um, yeah, and again, it looks like he's just... That's how he breaks his lines up. But then we get in and things start getting a little different looking. Um, things start getting a little um, chaotic. And then we have more of like some things like this in the middle of it. Um, it to me, it was kind of distracting. It was like, okay, so there's stuff all over the place. I'm like, are where the lines falling is that important do i need to be aware of this um <clears throat> it just all i don't know it it just felt strange to me um it, it made me notice it and you know if you're doing like concrete poetry like where <clears throat> your words are supposed to actually paint a picture instead of just like the words themselves painting a picture in your mind, but the words on the page actually paint a picture. Um, if you're doing that, then that, that's a thing and that's what you're wanting to do or whatever. But um, this kind of just made me feel like I should notice it. And I feel like you shouldn't notice those things like it should just like flow and be but that that's a me thing like you might really like this like this one kind of looks like a waterfall like it just like it kind of cascades down um the side a little bit um and i'm the kind of guy who as soon as they look up into the sky and see clouds i start guessing what all the shapes are so when you start throwing your poetry at me like this i'm like oh that's a sports car you know, like, um, oh, that is a ballerina. Okay. All right. Um, <clears throat> so that is uh, probably one of my flaws in looking at this. But um, there is... Th this poem, like, this poem made me laugh. And it made me laugh, and it made me think of... Um, something like I related to it because um, I'm going to maybe just read it. Um, I think it's just called London. Um, London cross figured creeping with trams and the artists on Sundays in the summer, all tracking nature in the suburbs. It could have been any place, but it wasn't. It was London. I like that. I like that line. Um, and when someone shouted over that they got a model, I ran across the court. But then when the model started taking off her clothes, there was nothing underneath. I mean to say, she took off her shoes and found no feet. She took off her top and found no tit. Under it, and I must say, she did look a bit astounded just standing there looking down at where her legs were not but so very carefully then she put her clothes back on and soon she was dressed again completely 
She was completely all right. Do it again, cried someone, rushing for his easel. But she was afraid to, and gave up modeling. Forever after, slept in her clothes. Oh yeah, slept in her clothes. <laughs> so that whole thing is just hysterical. Like, um, just that there's this nude model in an art thing or whatever, art class, art, whatever, what have you. And she disrobes, and under the robe there is nothing. Like, and she's like, oh my gosh, there's nothing here. Like, <clears throat> and then what the fuck are the artists supposed to paint if there's no life under the coat for their life drawing? Um, so that just cracked me up a little bit. Um, and you know what? The other thing I was going to say um, about Ferlinghetti's poetry is that the way his poetry goes, if you notice when I was reading that, the the beats sounded off sounded strange like words dropped in weird places <clears throat> and so you're like okay so am i not supposed to acknowledge the breaks and just like read it through like a sentence at that point like what the fuck but the other thing i will say about ferlinghetti's poetry is that it seems like and um I can't be the only person who's ever thought this. It seems like he's writing something and it's like getting really good. And then the phone ring. And so he just stops and then goes and answers the phone. And then when he comes back, he forgets he was writing a poem and then starts another poem, starts writing something else. And he's just typing away. Someone knocks at the door. He gets up. It's a pizza. He gets the pizza. He comes inside. He sits down. He eats the pizza. Maybe has a beer flips on the TV to see if there's a game on, no game, whatever, goes back to his desk and starts writing a new poem, never going back to the one he finished. Like, um, <clears throat> that one I was just reading, like the way the words went, I felt like there was going to be like another line or something. And that one, I like, I feel like that one ended okay, but still the way the words fell on the page made me think there was another line coming. Um, Here's one, um, uh, had gripped hot legs on him and sung a sweet, high, hungry, single syllable. And then that's the end of that one. I guess it doesn't really work unless I read the whole poem to you, but I'm not going to sit here and do this. And where they cut with the so red knife, it was red. Yeah, it sounds like that ends there. Maybe it's just the whole thing. Um, when you read the whole thing. No, 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 that looks like it too yeah so that's kind of a weird thing <clears throat> now i believe and i'm not 100 percent, but i believe that this is like his first stuff um in here so um published to celebrate 40 years of city lights publishing which began with the letterpress printing of this book in 1955 it was for Getty's first book well, there you go. I just answered my own question just by reading the back of the book, people. That's what you do. Um, but anyway, so if you are a fan of Ferlinghetti, and um, I know there's at least one fan of Ferlinghetti in here um, because of the comments from the other video. Wink, wink. I'm talking to you. Um, what is your favorite Ferlinghetti book? Because there was also someone else... I'm trying to remember how long ago it was. I think it was over the summer. Um, we're wanting to know what my thoughts of Ferlinghetti were. And um, I remember saying um, that I hadn't read a whole lot of his stuff. Um, the few things that I read weren't bad. But I feel like City Lights, like his... His footprint on City Lights um, and on the, po the poetry scene was almost bigger than anything he could have written. So um, now um, I think that statement um, is still true. Um, but if you are a fan of the Getty, um, let me know who what, what book of his you think is really like your favorite book. 
so I could um, take a look at it. Or if um, you just have a favorite poem of his and you want to like push me into that direction, um, I would love to take a look at that. Um, but at the end of the day, I liked it. I didn't love it. Um, it was a little confusing, and some of the poems felt like um, they ended too soon. That's it. So um, if you've read these, let me know down below, and um, let me know what you think. And until next time, I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.